Please join me in giving a very, very warm welcome to our first guest speaker, who is Dr. Colin Heron, Managing Director of Zero Carbon Futures, who is going to speak to us about uh, the northeast of England leading the way in low carbon vehicles. Colin. Um, I am from the region, you can tell by the accent, so that's positive. Um, I've just done a little sum with my colleague Josie there, and I've just worked out that I've now been in the automotive industry for one year under 40 years. I know I don't want to go over 40, but never mind. In 40 years, I have to say I have never experienced the change that's happening now. I've worked for Nissan for 17 years, I've worked in the supply chain, and it was basically next model, next model, next model, next model, and that's what we did. What you're seeing today in this region and what you can see at the test track is completely different. We're now in a completely different ball game, and it's the most exciting period I've ever been in. So pretty it's the back end of me working like instead of the first front end. At the moment, I've called it a technical transformation. We are actually transforming from a hundred years of dominance of the internal combustion engine to other methods of power. The two contenders at the moment are electric vehicles and hydrogen, or combinations. The combinations is very important. There is a lot of people think it's electric or petrol. It's not. It never will be. It will be combinations for the next several years of hybrid, it will be hydrogen range extender, it will be battery, it will be plug-in, it will be diesel, it will be horses for courses. And I think we all need to understand that it's not one or the other. It's not VHS versus Betamax at all. And I think down at the test track, if you haven't been in when you get there, we're pleased to show all the alternatives. There's some great cars down there, but it's different technology. And I ask you all to think about the right, the right product for the right job. Fortunately, in this region, we have two leading companies. The leading the way, one is Smith's, and one is Nissan. But we have smaller companies. We are making electric scooters in the region, and we have some smashing integrator companies like Abbott. So at the moment, we're leading on EV, but I'm really pleased to see the Ampera here and the plug-in Prius and vehicles like that. So that shows where we're going. In this region, and we've striven very, very hard to position ourselves for the low carbon vehicle um, lead position. You can see in the top corner we've got the charge points. Um, I'll go through a little bit of detail there coming up. And we've got the vehicles, the Smiths and Nissan. We've also got a phenomenally powerful, well working back office which supports all the infrastructure in the region. And we've got a performance test track. And it says, you are here. No, you're not. But when I wrote this, I thought you would be. But I've been away for two days and I haven't had a chance to catch up. But never mind. If you go down the test track and you want to borrow this slide, this is where you are. We're actually at the other side of the plant. The bottom is a picture of this college here. This academy is set up for sustainable manufacturing. It's only been open since August. And it is already, you've seen the people going through, being trained in the new technologies. The other building is we're looking at construction. Question, what has construction got to do with electric vehicles? One of the things we have to consider as well, and ask you to think out of the box, is electric vehicles are not just a mode of transport. They are energy. They are an energy store. It's energy on wheels. You may have heard of vehicle to grid, but we're now talking about vehicle to home. <coughs> think about it, drive to work, charge your car, go home, plug it in and run your house off your car. People might say that's a bit far-fetched, it's not, it's already happening in Japan. It was tested as a result of the tsunami when they ran out of power. So they're actually running houses off the car. What happens to the battery when it's no longer useful for the car? Can a house become an isolated power generation unit where it starts making its own electricity? So it can actually charge the car during the night or the car can charge the house. All these things are part of what we're doing in the region is the picture. Which is why, and I put that picture up, that's a lithium-ion battery. 
As you go down the test track, if you look to your left, you'll see a quarter billion pound facility making these. The batteries are the game changer. We never had these before. But they've got more than the use of just driving and powering your car. Time will change. Time and time again you will hear, but there's no charging points. We don't have enough charging points. In this region, we have the most comprehensive charging infrastructure. My colleague Josie Wardle will give you information on that. It's the most comprehensive in the UK. We know that, we've been audited, we've been tested, it's been written upon. We now have over 300 points out there and 8 QC. There were 7 when I went away last week and I've come back this morning and there's now 8. Times move on. In this region, we've also got 10% of the national EV sales for 4% of the population. So not only have we got more charge posts, it's been reflected by more people in this region are adopting the technology than any other region in the country. We're now moving into hydrogen testing. If you went down the test track, you may or may not see, and if you see me down there, I'll point it out, we have hydrogen filling facilities now. And this hydrogen is green hydrogen, so we're making it ourselves from water. So we're making hydrogen from water, running it in the car and spitting water out the back. That's about as green as you're ever going to get. And we've now, the government has put out the 8,000 plug-in grant. That's making the vehicles even more attractive. And again, you will see vans down there, locally made, and um, the kangoos down there, I believe? The kangoos down there as well. So to have a look at them. So there's no question about the infrastructure. It's there. It's no question about the technology. Battery cars have been running for a long, long time. So, you've seen the speakers, we've got people here who use them, who sell them, who build them. You can ask all the questions you want. Try before you buy, another colleague Liz will tell you about a big trial we've been running in the region with lots of normal people running them. You can go down the workshop, we've got a brand new workshop and test track, so you can have a look around there and you can drive them and ask as many questions as you want because all the people who have the answers I can assure you either in the room or down the test track. Thank you very much. <laughs>